And I think that's kind of the overall theme of what you're doing in this whole program, right? Is you're gonna have to be thinking about the different perspectives of the people you're working with in the circles. So um, this is obviously like a far-fetched example of being someone from 500 years ago, but when you're in a circle um, and you're uh, working with other peers, you have to put yourself sometimes in their shoes and be able to see the other perspective. So I think that's, this is kind of a, a more extreme example of that. So that um, brings us to the our lesson in critical thinking, and we have some uh, videos that we'll be able to play for you. Um, little short, short clips like we did last week. Maybe if you turn it up from the iPad. All right, on the on this side. evidence, evaluate arguments, and adapt your thinking so you stay switched on and engaged in different situations. Critical thinking involves stepping back from a situation to enable you to see all the angles before making judgments or taking decisions. It means identifying the key points, analyzing the sources of information, weighing up different types of evidence just as a judge and jury would do in court of law, and putting it all together into your own independent, thought-through point of view. One thing that it's very important to realize is that critical thinking isn't about being critical. And it's about much more than just finding flaws in other people's claims. By itself, that isn't enough to give you an edge. To be a true critical thinker means being creative, reflective, and adaptable, evaluating the evidence to decide for yourself what is accurate, what is relevant, and do I have sufficient information to take a decision on this topic? Thinking critically means taking a stand for yourself. It can be difficult not to be swayed by those family or friends' views on things, or certain beliefs that just feel right. But learning how to use these higher order thinking skills can help you to feel much more confident in your own opinions and conclusions. Critical thinking is also about a sense of discovery and excitement, not only about learning, but evaluating arguments to see how they stand up and filtering for yourself what resonates as right or wrong. By using these techniques, you'll find yourself a, a clearer, better thinker. McCat, learn better, think smarter, aim higher. So I thought that was Critical good. thinking is Sorry. all about asking questions. A good um, synopsis of what critical thinking is Here's the definition that we're working with. Uh, the objective analysis and evaluation of an issue in order to form a judgment. Uh, so the key words there would be objective and analysis um, in order to get you to the point. Um, does someone have another way of putting that? Because I know that's kind of a very clinical definition, but could someone paraphrase that um, of what their definition of critical thinking would be? Yeah. Anybody else? There's no, you know, right answer. No. Um, does anyone, um, I have some examples that kind of, because I think without realizing it, you probably use critical thinking in every day of your life, not just in classes or in school. Um, can you think of different jobs and like how that per profession would use critical thinking? I can throw some out if you guys need. 
Like, for instance, if you're an emergency room nurse, what kind of critical thinking would you have to use? Yes. You have to look at the symptoms that the patient has to deduce um, what they might be experiencing. Sure. And in the emergency room, too, maybe like assess um, triage, right? Like which, which illnesses or symptoms are more serious than others. Um, what about a plumber? Um, that, that might be something that someone's not normally thinking about, but yeah. Assessing what the issue is when like, you arrive onto like wherever your like work is, to see like what really is the problem and what you need to fix. Yeah, and then maybe like then what materials would you have to use, right? Um, what about an attorney? What kind of critical thinking skills does an attorney need? Yes. Thinking about what evidence is available and how to use it to help you assess the case. Yeah, your strategy. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Um, what about like a manager <coughs> at um, at a store? Yes. If a problem goes awry and the customer's not happy, you, they would need to think critically about how to like fix the situation to make sure that the customer is happy with the service. Yeah, for sure. And dealing with the employees, right? So like that was just. We have four different examples, four totally different professions on how each one differently uses critical thinking skills. Um, what about when you're scrolling on Instagram or TikTok and you see someone who is talking about this great um, like sunscreen or lotion that they're using? When you're watching that, what kind of critical thinking skills are you using when you're watching that? Sure. And if they're talking about when their product, right? Like, would you want to maybe assess is this sponsored, right? Like, is this hashtag ad and all that? Because then it's like you want to think about, well, like, is this something they're really a fan of, or are they trying to tell me to buy this, right? Um, with, I imagine there's people here who are into shopping. Um, if you're buying something online, are you using what kind of critical thinking skills are you using? Or if you're trying, if you're going to make a big purchase, yes. I can't see the name, so in the white cardigan. Oh, yeah. I'm <laughs> yeah. sorry. No, you're fine. Um, I guess just assessing like the quality versus like the price, and like seeing if it's worth it for the price. Yeah, and do you ever read the reviews when you yeah. buy something? Right. So like there, you're reviewing um, and going through and seeing like how many, you know, like on Amazon, right? Like how many positives versus negatives. Um, let's see, what about, and this is something probably top of mind for a bunch of you, is uh, choosing a career path. What kind of critical thinking skills go into like your decisions after high school? Yes. Uh, say if I wanna apply to be uh, like a manager, like, like where would it be? Like do I have to move and like how much it would cost? Right? Not only for my living principles, but Anything else? Yeah. Big thing for me is like uh, job security. Okay. So if I choose to go to university and pursue a degree in this field, like will this job still exist after you know I've, I've gone into this debt? And like is it yeah. something that I can actually do in the future? Work the student loans, right? And like some people legitimately consider if they want to do college or not. That's a question. Um, like, do you want to work at a nonprofit or a corporation? Um, did you, you have another example? Oh, I was gonna say if it matches your interests at mm -hmm. all, because then like, if you like like an entry level position, but then later on you realize it's not kind of doing what you want to do anymore, would you even be happy in like 10 years later? Yeah. Still doing the same thing? Yeah, for sure. Those are all good examples. Anybody have anything else? No? Okay. Um, so yeah, even as you can see here, anything from like scrolling on Instagram or buying something on Amazon, you're always using critical thinking and it's even more important now. I'm sure you see things on the news or whatnot about, um, you know, like with AI and stuff like that, like is, are things real or not? And you ha really have to be good about using your critical thinking. All right, let's see. It's kind of a good one about um, Socrates.
Socrates, one of the founding fathers of Western philosophical thought, was on trial. Many Athenians believed he was a dangerous enemy of the state, accusing the philosopher of corrupting the youth and refusing to recognize their guts. However, Socrates wasn't feared for claiming to have all the answers, but rather for asking too many questions. While he loathed formal lectures, the philosopher frequently engaged friends and strangers in lengthy conversations about morality and society. These discussions weren't debates, nor would Socrates offer explicit advice. In fact, the philosopher often claimed to know nothing at all, responding to his partner's answers only with further questions. But through this process, Socrates probed their logic, revealing its flaws and helping both parties reach a more robust understanding. These insightful questions made Socrates beloved by his followers. Two of his students, Plato and Xenophon, were so inspired that they replicated their mentor's process in fictional dialogue. These invented exchanges provide perfect examples of what would come to be known as the Socratic method. In one of these fabricated dialogues, Socrates is conversing with a young man named Euthydemus, who is confident that he understands the nature of justice and injustice. Socrates probes the student's values by asking him to label actions such as lying and theft as just or unjust. Euthydemus confidently categorizes them as injustices, but this only prompts another question. Is it just for a general to deceive or pillage a hostile army? Euthydemus revises his assertion. He claims that these actions are just when done to enemies and unjust when done to friends. But Socrates isn't finished. He asked the young man to consider a commander lying to his troops to boost their morale. Before long, Euthydemus is despondent. It seems that every answer leads to further problems, and perhaps he's not quite sure what constitutes justice after all. In employing this question-oriented approach, Socrates described himself as a thief whose inquiries assist others in giving birth to their ideas. In his method of questioning, draws out and rules unexamined assumptions and then challenges those biases. It doesn't always provide definitive answers, but the method helps clarify the questions and eliminate contradictory or circular logic. And by following a line of inquiry where it logically leads, both the question asker and answerer can end up in unexpected places. This technique isn't limited by the conversation's content, making it incredibly useful in numerous fields. During the Renaissance, the method was used to teach clinical medicine. Students proposed their rationale for different doses, while a doctor questioned their assumptions and moderated discussion. In this model, the method could even produce conclusive results. This same approach was later used in other sciences, such as astronomy, botany, and mathematics. Following the Protestant Reformation, it was adapted to tackle abstract questions of faith. In the 19th century, the method became an essential part of American legal education. Professors explored students' understanding of judicial reasoning, challenging them with unforeseen hypothetical situations. This approach is still used today by the Supreme Court to imagine the unintended impacts of passing a law. The Socratic method can be adapted to teach almost any topic that relies on critical reasoning, but its success depends on the teacher employing it. An effective Socratic educator must be well-versed in their subject. Rather than bullying their students or showing off their superior intellect, they should be modest, genuinely curious, and affirming of every contribution. In this regard, Socrates himself may not have been the most subtle Socratic teacher. Historians believe he was deeply critical of Athens' particular brand of democracy and known to pass those concerns on to his followers. These subversive beliefs were distorted in public forums and thought to have inspired two of his pupils to treasonous ends. It was likely for these ideas Socrates was brought up and eventually sentenced to death. But even on his deathbed, artists depict a serene philosopher ever curious to explore the ultimate question.
What was life like in Socrates' Athens? Travel back in time to 427 BCE and experience how an ancient democracy made its decisions. focus on that curiosity, ask as many questions as possible. Um, when you are giving information, then part of the critical thinking task is to be able to tell the difference, right, between fact and opinion. Um, you're always making that assessment, and I think everyone here knows the difference between a fact and an opinion when you're, um, this gives some keywords that kind of give you a clue as to, or kind of a flag of when something is a fact versus an opinion, a fact being a true statement, something that can be proven. Um, when you're looking at that, keywords are like date, numbers, science, history, um, nonfiction, and an opinion is basically if someone feels about something, right? So feelings aren't facts. Um, keywords that you would kind of be clued in on or if someone uses words like I prefer, or I think, I feel, I believe, or er words or ist words, like the greatest, um, Better. Better. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> More. <laughs> so um, that's just kind of a, a reminder of always be um, critical about whether or not the information you're getting, especially when you're dealing in the future in your circles and dealing with real people in real situations, you're going to have to make that determination between someone saying like, well, I felt like he did this because of X, Y, or Z versus finding out exactly why. And that's because you're going to get both perspectives, right? <clears throat> Let's see. What do we want to do? Should we do? Let's do the brain teaser. So um, this is a video that's going to give you questions, and you guys can just shout them out as they come. It gives you kind of like a countdown. Um, so they're just little brain teasers to get you get you going. You'll see how it. Try to um Like, so it's kind of cueing you to think. 
the horse is named Friday, right? Very good. We got we got that one kind of there.
pick out a couple of different statements um, that you see that are in the piece and describe if it's a fact or an opinion and why you came to that conclusion. Um, and then we'll talk about it. We'll give like probably 10 minutes to read through it. It's double-sided, but it's a short article. But I thought you guys might find it interesting based on the age of it. <laughs> if you don't have, you don't have to fill, if you just want to use your computer to type in, that's fine too. The goal is just to kind of identify some facts in the article versus opinion, especially since this is an opinion piece. <laughs> 